back again. Hopefully at this point you get the, the main number one contiguous qualifying 490 every 490 years. Every 490 years from what? Well, Old Testament, it was every 490 years from Adam's fall, okay? When Christ comes, we have a new 490 beginning at his birth and a second 490 for church age beginning at his death. So it's one 490, but somehow this is a, like an, a special intense window of time. Okay, to echo the intense window of time that was his own time. But it's every 490 years after 30 AD or every 490 years from what is really the end of 4 BC, but we're calling it 1 AD just to keep it simple. Okay? So I track them here as consecutives. All right? They're tracked as consecutives, but I, the birth one, I didn't know, where am I? Sorry, my mouse moves faster than my brain. The first one ending here from his birth and then ending here from his death. The worksheet tracks his death. You're going to you're going to see little gold markers with the the sort of stripes tracking from his death. And the birth ones I don't have a special mark for. I'm going to have to fix the worksheet to show that cuz I didn't know when I did this worksheet that there was bible meter to confirm it. So I was guessing. I knew the death one had to be true, but I didn't know that the birth one had to be true. It's both. Okay, so it's every 490 years from his birth and every 490 years from his death. They're contiguous, and it's a qualifying period. Somebody's got to super mature. And we'll just say for shorthand, by the 490 after his death. But the, the most intense period of that super maturation is going to be between his birth and death. So it, it's almost like here's the start of the final round of supermaturation and if it's not done by here time ends now we have church age and we have rapture and that can happen in spite of this so there are two ways time can end when I say time I mean time as we know it first the rapture which can happen today tomorrow a thousand years from now second and more frightening if you really want to think about it is somebody doesn't super mature and it only has to be one person but it has to be at least one person or we're all gone because that's a rule that goes back to Adam Christ is the last Adam so that rule didn't change all right so we're mankind has always been under this gun and you never know who the super maturation people are now post cross we know Paul did it in first uh, was it second Timothy four verses seven and eight. We know he did it, but that was only for the first four ninety. Christ, because he's God man, cannot be allowed to you know um, be the be credited with that. Come on, where is it? Christ cannot be allowed because he's God man. See, the rules are different. So the 490 starts over. And that's a major doctrine in the New Testament. And the rapture is just like another layer of it. And understand that rapture, the reason why rapture it needs to be understood as a doctrine is that the church can die due to apostasy. And it can also complete due to maturation. So if, if church dies due to apostasy, and it can, if we're too apostate, God has to recall us. It's a failure. If church is too apostate, time ends. If church matures, time ends. The rapture that's talked about in the Bible covers both. And you never hear anybody talk about that. 
They should, because Christ did. When he said, you're the salt of the earth, that tells you. What does salt do? It preserves time. It preserves the time of whatever is salting, whatever it salts. The time of it staying good is preserved. Otherwise, it rots. So church can rot or church can be matured. All right. So this is a really important doctrine that goes all the way back to Adam. It didn't change. At the same time, if church matures, well, it can be rapture for that reason. Okay? And church isn't maturing if not if at least one person doesn't super mature every 490. Same rule as since Adam. So now we go back. Hopefully you've got the idea. Every 490 years. That's timeline 1. 490, 980, 1470, 1960, and so on. Okay? That is one timeline that the Bible accounts. And John is doing that in Revelation 17, so you got to know about it. The question is, at Christ's birth, the 490 start point is Christ's birth and Christ's death. Okay? So it's got a double meaning for us because, of course, you know, we're the firstborn. He's the firstborn. He's resurrected. He's first fruits. Okay? That's what Pentecost means. That's the Bible's name for Easter. Okay, so that's us. That's why we have, as it were, a double portion as church. All right. The second contiguous rule is not merely the 490. The second contiguous rule, and you've heard about this so often, but what does it mean? 1,000. A day of the Lord is a 1,000 years. Everybody misuses that verse. Okay, well, it's a time grant. Now, in the Old Testament... It's easy to tell Moses got it, but I'm not sure who amongst these guys prior to Moses got it. I'm guessing it had to at least be Enoch, because he was so good, God just took him. Yeah, ha-ha, solar year, 365 years. God just took him. He didn't even die. God just took him home. So if that's a statement about how good he was, and that, you know, he's the only person in the Old Testament that that was said of, Okay, except maybe you can say something about Elijah. I'm not sure. Then Enoch must have gotten a thousand-year time grant. Now, we know Moses did, and we know Abraham did because of, you know, the way the kind of time grant, the kind of other grants that they got. But there's nothing said about what Enoch got, just that he was so good God took him home. So I'm assuming that that's a thousand years. And then when I do the math, to crunch over, okay, 1687 would be where it stops, and that's just after the flood, okay? So it makes sense to argue it. And if you come up with somebody else, let me know. Maybe Methuselah got it. But it should have been Enoch, considering how the Bible praises him. All right, so the 1,000-year time grants work the same as the 490s. They're contiguous. And this is why the Bible's dates are what they are. If you don't understand this, then you don't know the meaning of the thousand that Moses is using. He meters Genesis 1 to 1050, okay, civilization. And, and you'll have to go see the Genesis videos to see that in detail. But the thousand itself is also a time grant, and it's a qualifier. So every 1,000 years, someone has to even super mature much more in order for the thousand to be granted. And that matters because the unbeliever won't get his his 50-year voting window if this doesn't happen. So now look, look, if somebody got a 490 and somebody else got another 490, that will only take you to 980. That doesn't take you to a thousand. So the thousand can't occur unless some other person or maybe somebody who got the 490 got the 1,000, okay? So one of these guys had to get the 1,000 by here. Somebody had to. I'm saying it's Enoch. Now, maybe it was somebody else. If you come, maybe you'll find a verse that'll show that it's really somebody else. But I couldn't find any, so I just picked him. Somebody has to get a 1,000-year 
time grant, which means much more mature than merely to get the 490. I'm assuming that Enoch got it, and then I'm assuming that Noah got it, because the numbers work if I make that assumption. I'm assuming that Moses got it. I'm assuming that Abraham got it, because the numbers all work with that assumption. Certain deadlines in history make sense with those assumptions. Okay? So every thousand years, now I shouldn't have to roll through the worksheet to show 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. You should figure that out by now. Okay, now, with a 1,000 year time grant, however, this 4106 becomes relevant. 1,000. Okay, the next person to get the 1,000 that we know of would be Noah. His 1,000 will run out 2556. Okay, because he gets his son when he's 500 years old. That's 1556 after Adam's fall. So his will run out 2556. All right, that is 100 years before when the exodus is going to occur. So somebody bef after him and before 2556 had to get it, had to get in a, a thousand. All right, so who would that be? Well, it's real obvious who it was. Abraham. Now, I mean, think about think about the what the Bible's text says about these people. It says a lot about Noah, more than it says about other people. It says that the whole world is going to get destroyed, and him and his family get in the boat, and they're going to be, as it were, the new Adam. Okay? So maybe Adam got the first thousand. Also, not just Enoch. But the point is, for sure, Noah had to. You see why? Because everything is basic, based on Noah from this point forward. So he must have gotten both a 490 and a 1000. Did he get more than four, one, one 490? Well, not really, because he dies at 950, or maybe he did, but I don't, I can't prove that. For sure, he got at least one, and for sure, he got a 1,000, because the whole human race is credited to him. So wouldn't that have to include a credit of time? And if it's the whole human race, believers and unbelievers alike, doesn't that have to be a 1,000 credit? Sure. Okay, and then you can say the same thing for Abraham. And 2046 is exactly, exactly, let's see if I can shrink this. Let's see if you can see. I'm sorry this looks so small. But, see, here's Noah at 1556. And then here's Abraham in the same year that Noah's 490 runs out. Just in time. That's the point that the Bible is making. In the very year that the 490 for Noah occurs, Abram makes it. Now why is that important? Well, because 490 is less than. 490 is less than 1,000. See? That's the second thing you need to know. It's the earliest of the deadlines that governs. In other words, you know, you can go back up here and say, and given the arguments that I made, it's reasonable to say, okay, Noah got a 490 year time grant and he got a thousand year time grant because all civilization comes from him and the 1,000 is a grant for civilization. Okay? All right, but that only takes you to 2556. And the worst part of it is the 490, someone's still going to mature every 490 years. So, okay, fine, Noah was granted that much more time, but if there's no believers who are maturing by the end of 490 years from here, then that 2000 can't play. All right, well, actually, it gets extended because it's 490 years from the supermaturation of Noah. So notice that thing, okay? Just like down here, we had Adam at 130. 490 years after that is beyond 490 and beyond 560 historically. So it extended the deadline. We have it happen here again. 
the deadline of the 490 from Noah was 2046. And Abram super matured that year. Yeah, because if he didn't, it wouldn't matter that there was also a time grant of 1,000 to Noah because there had to be a believer super maturing on the earlier of the two. But the earlier of the two, notice, is still beyond 2,000 because it's based on when, the date when Noah super matured. Okay? So there's an extension past the historical 2,000 based on the earlier of the 490 or the 1000. Now, as you go through this, I mean, you're going to have to look at it. The green, I marked the, the thousands off with green, and I marked the 490s with gold. And I'm sorry it's so busy, but that helps you track it. You'll notice there are some times when the 490 occurs before the next thousand. And it's like, whoa. In other words, time almost ended. Well, here's another instance where the 490 goes past the 1,000. Okay. Remember, Noah got it in 1556, so there's, there's 556 years more beyond that deadline that he got it. But this one intervenes. It occurs sooner. Okay. Now, so the 1,000, it's 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000. Those are the normal deadlines. For the next person to so super mature, he also gets a 1,000 time grant. And that's what happened with Abram. He got a 1,000 time grant as well as a 490 time grant. All right? So he got it well in advance of the Noahic deadline. So now we got till 330. Oh. Till, till 346, 3046 for the 1000, and then um, the five, 490 would end at 2046 plus 490, because now we're looking at the personal 490. So you've got contiguous 490, contiguous 1000. You've got a personal 490, which might extend beyond the contiguous. Okay? And also we've got the historical. So see Noah um, Abram's um, 490 would end at 2536, which I'll come back to in a minute. So you've got so you've got contiguous 490, that's one time track. Contiguous 1000, that's another time track. You've got the case where the 490 is one during the previous 490, but its own 490 ends past the historical 490, which is the third time track. It therefore extends time. But it could also be a problem, like if there was nobody to win the 1,000, time would have ended at 622. Okay? If there was nobody, you know, who had the 1,000. But Enoch won it within 65 years. So before the first 1,000 ended, Enoch won it. So now a second 1,000 can occur, but somebody's got to mature during that second 1,000. Okay, well, here's 2,000 passing, and it's there's nobody, or we don't know. Okay, but because the 490 extended to 2046, the deadline for both the 1,000 and the 490 ends up being 2046. You see how that works? So we got personal, we've got contiguous 490 as a qualifying, contiguous 1000 as a qualifying, contiguous um, possible extension that we're looking at right here, all right, that, that is also getting tracked. And then, of course, above all of them, or like underlying all of them, I guess you could say instead, is the historical. Here's a 490, here's a 70, here's 560, here's 1050. I can't get the mouse to slow down. Here's the 1050. That's 490 plus 70 plus 490. So you have four time tracks. That's before we even get to Christ. There's four time tracks. Now, because Noah 
I mean, Abram super matures here. He's getting a 490 and he's getting a 1000. But he's getting it prior to the end of two 1050s. Now, this is really important because the Bible tracks this also. This is the fifth time track. Sorry, it's so complicated. 2100 years. You had two 1050s that were allotted. And the Jews all know this. They, you can even Google on this part. The Jews have a sort of truncated expression of this. They call 2,000 years for the Goyim, 2,000 years for the Jews, then Messiah comes. Yeah, he does, and I've got to explain that. That you can just Google on those terms. They call the first 2,000, it's really 2,100, because they're, they're just truncating it to 1,000 rather than 1050. They call those the years of desolation. Then they're calling from Abraham forward the years of the Jews. Okay, because Abraham's the father of the Jews genetically. Okay. But the Bible accounts it a little differently. And this is where you see the difference in the 490 accounting and the 1000 accounting. Abraham super matures in 2046. He had to. Because Noah's 490 was the earliest of the due dates. And it ran out in 2046. Okay, but that's 54 years before 2100. So now the times of the Jews is really beginning 54 years early, early. And Abraham's son was named Isaac right here. Here's Isaac's birth, 2046 from Adam's fall, which we call 2060 AD. All right. Now, in order to reconcile this 54-year credit, therefore, and Bible tracks it assiduously, in order to accommodate the credit that says it were owed to the Gentiles because the times of the Jews are becoming, it's really 53.5 years early, because of that, the deadline for Christ's birth ends up changing, all right? The first change is the plan A, all right? I mean, it, 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 you could argue it should have been 4,100. But Isaac doesn't mature until he's 60. And so our boy Jacob isn't born until 2106. You'll notice that that's 100 and that's, that's, um, Six years after 2100, see, because it's 53.5, really 54. We'll just round it to 54. Plus extra six years, that makes our boy Isaac 60 years old at the time. The, the deadline at that point for Christ to be born would have been 4106, 2,000 years later. You see why that's 2,000 years later? But there's a six overhang that's going to have to happen. This is the origin of tribulation, by the way. There's a six-year overhang. Because our boy Isaac matured a little late. But because you had this credit, and because Abram is 490 years is still going, okay, that's why Isaac, uh, Jacob could be born. It's really... Esau and Jacob, but only Jacob believed in Christ, is 2106. So now the deadline for Christ to come in order for 2100 years for the Goyim, 2100 years for the Jews to be met, Christ is going to have to be born in, in 4106. Now that's real important because when you look at the Old Testament, starting in Genesis, because Moses is using this accounting, he's basing it on 2,000 years after Jacob's birth, Christ was supposed to be born. But a problem occurs after Moses. That problem is David. David, Abram's personal 1,000, remember, 3046. His personal 490 and here at 2536. Noah's personal 1000 ends at 2556. Okay, 
that's short of the exodus, which is 25, 2666, where is it? Right here. So now we have to have Moses super mature earlier or, you know, in time so that these two dates don't interfere. And that's where I'll pick up at the next increment.